fun. Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome to Kiss Down with Jesus, brought to you by COP USA. I am your host, Nina AJ. Hi, hi, children. Hi, hi, hi children. Hello. Amen. We want to welcome all of you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Last week, we did talk about love, 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 love. We are in the month of February, the second month of the year. So soon, the Lord has been so gracious unto us. And you and I, we are here today to continue our conversation where we left off last week. We started talking about love, true love, God's love for his people, God's love for his children. And we are here this afternoon to still talk about what? Love, love like Jesus, love like Jesus. But as we, we before we, we go ahead with that, um, I, will, I want the kids, the precious ones that are here that have Zoomed in here with me, they are going to introduce themselves. And then when they are done introducing themselves, we will let you precious one at home to tell us your name. And then we will all have a seat and enjoy uh, the program. We are all going to have some seat and have some fun. So the first person can start. Hello, I'm Jane Ball from the Cincinnati District. Hello, my name is Benedict Ball. I'm from the Cincinnati Hello, District. Hello, my name is Caleb and I'm from Norcos District. Hello, I'm Joel from Norcos District. Hello, my name is Afia from Charlotte District. Hi, my name is Anaita and I'm from Norcos District. Hello, my name. We want to. My name is Darren Afori from Cleveland District. Hello, my name is Declan Afori from Cleveland District. We want to welcome all of you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And precious, as, uh, precious ones at home, you are also welcome. Good, beautiful name you have. We love all of you. Thank you for your time. We are here to have so much fun. But precious ones, before we dive deeper into the storyline for today, we are going to learn our memory verse. We are going to learn our memory verse. So I'll be sharing my screen here and then we'll practice our memory verse. I'm going to share my screen and then we'll practice our memory verse for this week. So precious ones, today our memory verse will be taken from First John chapter three, verse 16. First John chapter three, verse 16. And I'll be reading from the NIV. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. I'll read it one more time and then we can all say it together. Okay, precious ones. So our memory verse for this week is 1 John chapter 3, verse 16. 1 John chapter 3, verse 16. And I'm reading from the NIV. This is how we know what love is. Excuse me. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. Now, I want all of you, amen. We are going to say it together, okay? I think we are having a lot of echoing in the background. So at this point, I won't let us say it together. So precious ones at home, I want you to practice your memory verse. It is always good to practice memory verse. But the key things that you can take from this memory verse is that what Jesus laid down his life for us. Jesus, God sent his only son to come to this on earth, right? Excuse me. He came on earth to die for our sins. He came and he laid down his life for us. And because of that, we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. Beloved, the Bible saying laying down for your brother and sister doesn't mean your biological brothers 
and your biological sisters, your real brothers and sisters. No, your brother and sisters, it takes us back to the story we learned last week about loving your neighbor as thyself, right? Loving your neighbor as yourself. So your neighbor, if your neighbor is a boy, it's your brother. If a neighbor is a girl, it's your one, it's your sister. So this is the key thing that I want you to take from this memory verse. God loves us and he laid down his life for us. Jesus Christ came on earth to die for us. Therefore, we that are in the Lord, we precious children, we need to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. Our brothers and sisters are your neighbors, right? God richly, richly, richly bless all of you. Precious ones, story time with Jesus. Yay! 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 So, so today we'll be talking about true love. Last week, we talked about true love, right? This week, we are still talking about true love. We are still in the month, right? Celebrate being in the, we are swimming in the pool of love this whole month and the, in the months to come. We are not just going to end the love with February, the month of February, but we're still going to show our love to one another, to our neighbors throughout the year and then the years to come. And we said, what? Love like Jesus. Love like Jesus. Love like Jesus. Remember in the scripture we read our memory verse. He said, Jesus Christ came to lay down his life for us. He came to die for you and I, right? So if Jesus came to die for you and I, then that should let you know how much he loves us. And here the theme is saying the love like Jesus. Hmm. Love like Jesus. Ask yourself, how many of you can love like, or what are some of the things that you have done in your life as precious ones? That proves or that shows that you have loved like Jesus. Does anybody have any story they want to share with us before we read our scripture? Yes, I like her. So um, normally, like almost kind of every day, I would wake up and say, thank you, God, for waking me up. And thank you, Jesus, for helping me to um, wake up. Because if I didn't wake up, and God wasn't here, then I would have been still in bed without moving. So I'm glad that God actually woke me up for another better day. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. God bless you for sharing with us. Anika is sharing that she's always grateful to God. She always say thank you to God. Awesome. Yes, Ifwa. Um, I agree. Um with Anika because you um, you always have to pray no matter what when you eat food um, because you never know when it could be poisonous you have to and you're lucky that you have food on the table um, because not everybody in the whole world has food on the table and no matter what food going to the park going anywhere you still have to thank the Lord that you're alive and you God bless you, Ifwa. God bless you. Ifwa agrees with what Anaika said. God bless you, Ifwa. Yes, Darren. Mm, I just wanted to add like that another way to love like Jesus is by having your devotions. Because when you read Mark 135, it says that early in the morning, while it while it was still dark. Early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. That showed that he loved God so much that very early in the morning, even when it was very dark, he was willing to get up all by himself and go and pray to God. Awesome. Fantastic contribution. Thank you for sharing. God richly, richly bless you. So, precious one, our scripture reading will be taken from 1 John chapter 3 verse 11 to 24. 1 John chapter 3, verse 11 to 24. And it's titled, Real Love is Sacrificial. Real Love is Sacrificial. So we'll call Anaika to read for us. Thank you, Auntie. I will be Bye. reading on 1 John 3, 11 to 24 from the NLT version. This is the message you have heard from the beginning. 
we should love one another. We must not be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and killed his brother. And why did he kill him? Because Cain had been doing what was evil, and his brother had been doing what was righteous. So don't be surprised, dear brothers and sisters, if the world hates you. If we love our brothers and sisters who are believers, it proves that we have passed from death to life. But a person who has no love is still dead. Anyone who hates another brother or sister is really a murderer at heart. And you know that murderers don't have eternal life within them. We know what real love is because Jesus gave up his life for us. So we also ought to give up our lives for our brothers and sisters. If someone has enough money to live well, to live well and sees a brother or sister in need but shows no compassion, how can God, how can God's love be in that person? Dear children, let's not merely say that we love each other. Let us show the truth by our actions. Our actions will show that we belong to the truth, so we will be confident when we stand before God. Even if we feel guilty, God is greater than our feelings, and he knows everything. Dear friends, if we don't feel guilty, we can come to God with bold confidence, and we will receive from him whatever we ask because we avoid obey him and do the things that please him. And this is his commandment. We must believe in the name of his son, Jesus, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. Those who obey God's commandments remain in fellowship with him and he with them. And we know he lives in us because the spirit he gave us, he gave us lives in us. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. And Nika, that was a fantastic reading. God richly bless you. I'm so proud of you. God richly bless you. Precious one, many people focus only on setting love. Like in this Valentine, this month of February, all we hear about is what? Love is Valentine's Day. Love and people share candies and, and work schools have, you have to share candies with other people and all that. But in this month that we even find ourselves in and what the pandemic that is going on, people are not even going to be sharing candies and all that. But there is more to just that. We that are Christians, we that love God so much, there is more to just that part of love. God wants us to love one another. God wants us to show that sacrificial love. We found that what we found was that as a child of God, we should be what? Be righteous, just as our father is righteous. Hallelujah. John was teaching the church that this was one major way that we could be assured of our salvation. If they were concerned with living in righteousness, they could tell that we have the spirit of the world, of God living in us or in them. This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil is or are. Anyone who does not do what is right is a child of God. It's not a child of God. Anyone who does not do what is right is not a child of God. Nor is anyone who does not love is his brother. So righteousness is one test, right? But John says that another test is love, love, love. He begins this new section of our love in the verse one, in verse 11, saying that what? Well, this is the message you had from the beginning, that we should what? Love one another. We should love one another. Precious ones, we need to love one another. Yes, um, um, kill it. And then we'll come to Benedict then Darren. What she said also reminds me of a story, um, Job, when um when the God test like the devil tested him to see if he wanted to like give up when um when all the things he had to give up, like to not love God anymore. So all the things that he did, Job still loved God no matter what. Great contribution. Great contribution, Caleb. Great contribution. God bless you. Yes, we go to Benedict then um, 
Darren than a Nike. To love God, we have to be in unity with God. Unity, meaning we have the same thoughts. We think and act the same way as God. The Bible even says in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer who I live, but Christ who lives in me. Mm. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. God bless you, Benedict. God richly bless you. Great contribution. We need to what? Believe and also Christ lives in us. And if Christ lives in us, and that we are saying that we have to live like Jesus, a love like Jesus, then it means that Christ lives in you, right? He lives in you. And then you have the same thought as God, right? So you have to do everything like Jesus. And the theme here is a love like him, love like Jesus. So even if you are struggling with loving people, you go to the masterpiece, you go to God and say, God, help me to love. Help me to live or love the way you loved to the extent that you came to lay down your life for us. Benedict, God richly bless you. God bless you. We'll go to Darren, then Anaika, then Ifwa. That reminds me of a very common verse known as John, John 1, 1. It says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. It, reminds you, it also reminds me of how you said that Christ lives in us. And if Christ lives in us, uh, and Christ is also the word, we can also know what he's trying to tell us by reading the Bible day and day and night. That is why Joshua 1, 8 and 9 says that keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you'll be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So when even Joshua said that and he led according to what he said. So we should always also keep in mind that God also can also speak to us through his word. God can also speak to us through his words, through his words. And that is why great contribution there on God bless you. That is why I always say we need to take our memory very seriously, right? Just imagine we have precious ones that will get up. Mommy, what, what's, what's for breakfast, right? And in America, oh, precious, uh, precious children, they have a lot of options. When they place their order for breakfast, you ask them, wow, so you're going to eat all this for breakfast? Okay, can I have some bagel and with um, cream cheese on? And with the cream cheese, I don't want plain, but I want strawberry or I want blueberries. And then you ask, can I have some flakes, um, egg? I don't want the whole egg, but I want the scrambled. Kids in America have options. I mean, they can describe what they want on their plate, right? And then what? It will be given to them and eat. Now you do breakfast, you do lunch, you do dinner. But precious ones, the Bible is telling us that we need to read our Bible. So all we do is we eat breakfast, lunch, dinner, go play our video game. If you have school work, you do it, right? But we need to spend time to read the Bible. I was doing a scripture reading challenge with my kids. And in a week, you have every day you have to spend like 15, I would say roughly, I give them five, I said five to 15 minutes. Sit on your Bible, read something and come share it with me, right? And to them, it was a challenge, right? Because this is not Bible. A lot of kids are not friends with the Bible, right? Even grown-ups, not everybody um, is, is, is used to do that or you, it's fun of reading the Bible, I mean, sorry. So because of that, we precious ones, I believe that whatever you practice every day, you become perfect with it. The more you read the Bible, you'll be able to express yourself. And when it comes to contributing like this, you begin to speak and you're able to relate it to a scripture. If somebody don't know the Bible, if they don't know the word of God, when they begin to speak, you can tell 
that they don't know what they are talking about, right? Precious ones. So you need to get glued to the Bible. You need to read the Bible. The words in the Bible come to encourage us. It comes to lift us up. It lifts your soul, your soul up when you are down. If you are crying and you read the Bible, you will wipe away your tears. Why? Because there's something, there's something unique about the Bible. It is a holy Bible. There is life in the Bible and everything in that Bible, precious one, it is the truth. The Bible don't lie. Everything we are going through now, right? It had happened before in the Bible. So let us go to the Bible and let us read our Bible and we will, we will come up with so many fun stuff, okay? So those that have raised their hands, we we'll have to go to Anaika and then go to Efwa and then I'll come back to Benedict and then I'll come back to Mesa White's family. Okay, Anaika's hand was up. Yes, I like it. My mom told me this one story um, about how sacrificial love is in is in us. So she told she told me this story about me having a cookie. And my baby sister came and she said she wanted the cookie. Giving giving to others is a way of showing love, even though you are the you are even hungry too, but she is too, and that's the only cookie left, then you give it to them because that is showing sacrificial love to your brothers and sisters. You have to show love to them or else they won't show love back. And if you say that you love God, but you don't love your sister and brother, then you must be lying because there's no way that you can't love God without loving your sisters and brothers. Another thing is that you have to love everybody everybody else, not just because in the Bible it says sisters and brothers, and that doesn't mean just your siblings. It means everyone, everyone, everyone in the entire world. It means that you have to show them love no matter who they are, whatever they look like and their, their personality and things. Because if you treat them the right way, they will bring it back to you. And if you show God's love to them, they will also show it back to you. The thing is that if we read our Bible more, we'll be closer to God and our spirit will get even closer to him so that we will be able to be filled with God's love. And we could even give our lives to God so that we'll be able to go, grow better with God. Wow, fantastic contribution. Now, I just wanna add to what she just said. We shouldn't only love our brothers and sisters, but we should love what everybody, including what? Your enemies, those that don't like you. There are people when they see you, you haven't done anything to them, then they just go, they are mad at you. You haven't done them anything, right? God is saying we should still show them love. Share your cookies, share whatever you have. Don't give it, them, don't give it all to them and you'll be starving, right? You can share it with them. You can share it with them. God bless you, Anika. Great contribution. We'll come to A4, then Benedict. A4, uh, you're can mute, you honey. Hear me? Yes, we can. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Um, one thing is I wanna share um what I feel about love. Um, in First Corinthians chapter thirteen, verse four to five, love is patient. Love is kind. It is not even. It is not boasting. It is not proud. It is not dishonoring other. It is not self self seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. And um, one more thing I want to share um, is actually a parable. Um, Jesus said to his followers um, about the good Samaritan, um, mm -hmm. about how he um, was on the road, he was beaten and two people, a Jewish priest and a Levitate came and they didn't help him. Finally, somebody else helped him and that was showing love even though he was from another culture, another city or another country. He still helped them because he had love. God bless you, Efwa. Great contribution. Efwa is related.
between pure love, true love, in the story of the Good Samaritan, about the parable, one of the parables of Jesus, the Good Samaritan, right? She is relating this true love to that, that what the man was able to help the Jewish guy that was laying down by the street. When he saw somebody laying there, he went to help, not because, oh, we the Samaritans, we don't get along with the Jewish people, so I'm not going to help this person. That instinct, that, that love that goes beyond that, it just striked him, and he went and helped the person. He went out of his comfort zone to help somebody who was dying by the roadside. Here is the case. Those precious ones that know the story. Pastors came and left, right? Priests passed by. Other people passed by. But look here, beloved, what I took from the Good Samaritan story was that it was somebody that we all claim to be his enemy. They don't get along, right? Two countries that don't get along. This person saved the other. He didn't just look at who this person is. He went, he didn't look at just the race, right? Black and white. He just didn't look at that. He went all out to help. He loved that Christ-like love, right? He loved like Jesus. That is exactly what happened. God bless you, Ifwell. God bless you, Anika. God bless all of you. Yes, we go to Darren, and then we'll come to the Mesa White family. Joel and Caleb saying, what's up? And then we'll go to Benedict and then we come to Declan. Okay, I wanted to add that it's not only parables that people actually show love to, certain people who they are not supposed to show love to, like like from traditionally. Because mm -hmm. David and Jonathan, Jonathan we made a covenant with David and he was willing to give off his belt, even his belt and his sword, everything he had so that just so that he could protect David because he loved David as his brother. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amazing, fantastic contribution. Awesome. I'm loving all of you, your contributions. God richly bless you. I don't want to get carried away this afternoon, but I'm enjoying the contributions. Great lesson. God richly bless you. Precious ones that just joined us. This afternoon, we are talking about true love, love like Jesus. And our scripture reading was taken from 1 John chapter 3, verse 11 to 24. 1 John chapter 3, 11 to 24. And Miss Anaika read for us from the NIV. We are talking about true love, loving like Jesus. And we are enjoying the great contributions that are coming. Yes, uh, Benedict. Speaking of breakfast, I'm getting kind of hungry. But kids, let's learn to stick to healthy foods. Let's do fruits, like fruit of the spirit, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. What a yummy breakfast. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, Mesa White's family. Jaden, I'll get back to you, okay? Okay. Um, I also have um, something to add that um, I have two memory verses to say about love. Proverbs 3, third, um, Proverbs 3, 3 to 4. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on your tablet in, of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. And also in 1 John 4, 16, it says, And so we know and rely on love. God has for us. God is love. However, lives in love, however, lives in love, lives in God, and God in them. Amen. 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 God richly bless you. Caleb, Joel, God bless you. Yes, Caleb, you can go. I it's the same with um Joel. I wanted to say two memory verses. Mine is um, 2 Corinthians 5.15 says, He died for everyone so that, who, so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they'll live for Christ who lived, who raised them. And I forgot this verse, but it was like it said, um, 
It said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things will be added to you. God bless you, Joel. Uh, Caleb, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Benedict, I want you to check your chat box. Check it for me quick before I call Jaden. Benedict, I want you to check your chat, the chat box. Go check it out, okay? Okay. Then, and then I will call you later. I'll call Jaden later. So I'll go to, um, whose end was that? It was Darren, yeah. So yes, Darren, and then we'll come to Jaden. This was Declan. No? <laughs> oh, Declan, sorry. Oh yeah, the way So I saying. have two stories to stay, to stay and to say, and they are all about Abraham. So first, Abraham and Lot. When Abraham had to, had a lot of land, but then he gave the better land to Lot. So he loved Lot, and also when Abraham, when Abraham was willing to offer his son. Isaac into God just because he loved God. Yes, because he loved God. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, Jaden. Joseph had the special thing, and then that's when his brothers threw him in the well, but he still loved his brothers. Joseph still loved his brothers, even though they sold him out, right? And they took away his beautiful coat, right? When they were starving and they came to Egypt, he still what? He still loved them. He still gave them food, right? God bless you, Jaden. Great contribution. Uh, we'll go to was it Darren's hand that was up before Anika? Okay, there's Anika. So um I know that that um when I when David was when David was about to fight Goliath, he believed in God and he knew that God was going to help him because he had the faith in God and he loved God. So when he loved God, it started to get him closer to God. So the more closer to God, he had the the ability to, of strongness next to him. And when when he um, killed Goliath. He won because he had God's strength right next to him, because he had faith in him. God bless you, Anika. God richly bless you. Precious ones, what kind? You see that? How can we describe this type of love? This type, we've been talking about love, 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 right? How can we describe this love that we just read from the Bible? How do we describe it? Yes, um, that um just before um i just wanted to add to what anaika said that it says in matthew 22 verse verse 37 to 39 it says that love jesus replied love the lord your god with all your heart and with all your soul and with all and with all your mind and the second is like it love your neighbor as yourself so that means that you must love your neighbor and god you need to love your neighbor and God. Precious ones, the love we are talking about this afternoon is what we would describe it as what? The sacrificial love, the sacrificial love, the humble love, the humble love. Yes, Benedict. I just want to add Jesus sacrificed. If, if you need to see the passion of Christ, to truly know, even though it's not really Jesus, it really represents the real true love that Jesus showed on the cross for us. Awesome. Yes, Jaden. I want to add off Anika's team because it says in John 8 verse 12, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever followed me will never walk, walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Jaden, my seven-year-old, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me, Jaden, God richly bless you. I don't know why I'm so fond of Jaden. He is seven years old. I just love the way he talks. I love everybody, precious ones at home and all of you here zoomed in. I just love his passion. 
God bless you, Jaden. The world, he's the world. He's the light of the world. We need to extend our love. Wherever there is light, our love needs to go there. God is light, right? And we are loving like Jesus. And if we are loving like Jesus, then we have to let that love light. What shines wherever we go. It has to shine wherever we go. When you have that sacrificial love, wherever you go, you don't pick and choose. You always want to help people, right? Whether irrespective of their color, you want to help them. You don't help with, with the assumption of what? Oh, they will do something in return. No, you are loving them because you are not selfish. When you do something, them for someone you don't say oh i did this and i did that it is never about i let the glory be given to god do good when you get a chance that's what i always tell my children do good when you get a chance don't compromise yourself but do good when you wherever you go then you get opportunity to do good do it for god to bless you do it if you can you have to share your food share it if you have to share something don't only give things you don't want i don't like this take it no, give things that you expect people to give you, right? That you appreciate. Don't give things that you don't want to people. Let us have that big heart. Remember, love like Jesus, love like Jesus. In the story of Cain and Abel, in the story of Cain and Abel, there's a lot that we can learn from there. We realize that what? Cain's action was what? Describe, let's describe Cain's action. Cain's action here. The brother who went to give something that he didn't like, right? I'm introducing us into another, uh, another um, part of the story. Let's look at Cain. He, and I just talked about, he did not like what, whatever he went to give as an offering to God. It's things he didn't like, rodney stuff, right? He didn't take the thing out of his heart. Now, what he did to the brother, how would you describe his action? Yes, the floor is open. Yes, if what? Um, he was so um he was selfish. Um, he was selfish. Jealous that no. If I say one, so that another another child can also say some. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if I said Cain was selfish, yes, who else? And I here. We can't hear you, honey. You're mute. Um. Uh. Cain was like he was like really like greedy. Like he wanted. He was, he was like he was he trying. Was to, greedy. He wanted to get the good things from God, but because of what he gave to God, he didn't get he didn't get the right he didn't get the good thing back. But God still loved him because he didn't even let anybody kill him right after he killed his own brother. Even after doing such a bad thing, God still loved him. Awesome. Fantastic answer. Yes, Caleb. He was jealous. He was jealous. He was jealous. Why was he jealous? I mean, remember, you didn't give things that were right. You didn't go offer what was right from your heart. So why would you be jealous, right? Why Why was he jealous? Yes, Caleb, uh, um, Joel. Oh, Joel got up, okay. He was jealous because he um, wanted God's blessing that uh, God gave to Abel. He wanted God to, sh he wanted um, God to say, like a good job to him though he didn't give from the bottom of his heart that's why he was jealous great answer i mean hello hello everyone here hello okay precious ones if you didn't do a good job why do you need a a good job why do you want me to compliment you saying oh you're fantastic you're amazing oh good job i love you Mwah. and blow you a kiss once i know you didn't do a good job why would god do that remember god created us right god lives in us right so god sees a good job and a bad job right two people standing there i would take joel and the brother caleb 
their mom knows if one is doing a good job and one is doing a bad job. You know why? Because you can easily compare, right? So if you want me to say a good job, that's what I tell my girls. If you want a good job, then you got to do, catch up and do whatever makes it what? Meet that standard to be a good job, right? You won't get a good job for doing something bad. Right, precious ones? Does mommy and daddy say a good job to you when you do something bad or what you are doing? You're not really focusing and getting it right at home. Because if that is what mommy and daddy do, then I need to have a conversation with mommy and daddy. And I'm sure that is not the case, right? Yeah, it doesn't happen that way. It just doesn't happen that way. So good job is good job and bad job is bad job, right? You need to work on this. Next time you need to do this and do that. And as we guide you, no one is perfect, but as we guide you, you will turn out to be what? The best. Therefore, as precious ones, we need to allow ourselves to, re to receive corrections. When people correct us, we need to take it in. And what? Improve on that. Take it, work on it. So we can become what? The best out of the best. Okay, precious ones. Um, Benedict's hand has been up for some time. So we'll call Benedict and then we call Ifwa. And then we come to Joel Caleb. Mine is kind of a bit lengthy. I just want to say that um, if Cain, he lacked self-control. God told him that sin was crouching at his door. And if he couldn't rule over it, it would just jump in and take over him. And Cain did not realize that, oh, he just got super mad for some reason because, like, he wanted God's blessing. And here's what some people don't understand about self-control. This is breaking up to another part. I probably said this once. I'm going to say it again. The Holy Spirit does not cause people to lose control over their behavior. I just want to. God bless you. God bless you, Benedict. God bless you. Great contributor in this children's uh, Kiss Time with Jesus. I have great contributors here. Future prophets and future pastors, future evangelists and apostles here, doctors and uh, pharmacists and teachers and nurses and, and call it lawyers, attorneys and scientists and, 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 and call it all, computer scientists. All of them, we have them in children's ministry. We are blessed to have unique children like you in here to be contributing and you at home. Precious ones, we are so proud of you. May the Lord continue to increase you, grant you more wisdom in this journey that we walk. Okay? God bless you. Yes, Efwa. Um, I have another story I like to contribute about about um Paul. No, about Paul. No, about Paul. That he was one of um Jesus. No, Jesus and God loved him no matter what, even though um before he turned into Saul. Um, he was, um, okay, we'll, we'll leave a four and then we'll come back to a four again. Um, who's an, yeah, the main self white Caleb or, um, Caleb, you can go and then Joel will go. So I just wanted to say that Caleb and Cain was rebellious because although he didn't do a good job, he uh, acted with violence. He, like um, Benedict said, he wasn't in control of himself. So he acted rebellious against his brother and killed him at the end. God bless you. God bless you. Great contribution, Joel. Great, fantastic one. Fabulous. God richly bless you. Yes, Caleb. Um, Joel, Caleb. I don't know why I keep missing you guys <laughs> then. <laughs> mixing it up. Yes, Caleb. Well, what I wanted to say, it was kind of like what Joel said, was that, oh, like, God, like, he was kind of rebellious, but God wanted to show him a way to, like, get out of the rebellious, since the devil was, like, 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 there was a door between them, and the devil was getting close to him, so God wanted him to, like, um, like, come, like, near God, so that the devil won't tell him, tempt him to kill Cain and Abel. God bless you. Great contribution. Yes, we go to um, Jaden's handle has been up for some time. So we'll go to Jaden. 
because God saw his disciples that were Gali and Peter. And, and then he helped them because they were going fishing and God helped them catch fish. So what Jaden is saying that God loves Peter and the disciples, the fishermen, right? And then they also love him. They also love God, right? They also love Jesus. And because of that, when they went fishing, Jesus helped them to catch more fish, right? And that's why there's a say that I will make you fishers of men, right? <laughs> Benedict, did I say your story, what you were going to say? Okay, you can go ahead, continue with what I was going to say. Okay. So I just want to say that when Fafnir got the fish, he wanted them to catch, catch more people because he wanted them who... The ultimate goal is for everyone to follow Jesus and come together as one. And that's why he called them fishers of men. So they can catch other men and they will start to follow Jesus. I also want to add on to Caleb, I mean Joel's contribution about rebellious. Also, the devil was rebellious before he became the devil. Because first he was an angel. That's when he thought he could just take over everything. Like he was the creator, like he was the number one. And that didn't go so well. So there was a war in heaven and ultimately he lost. Mm -hmm. And he lost. Yeah, God bless you. God bless you. He lost. He used to be an, an angel, right? He was disobedient. And there's always a consequences for, for our wrong actions. There's always a consequences when we make wrong choices and decision it will you will leave it will leave after you right here the consequences was that he was kicked down right he came, was thrown out of heaven right and that's why he's all over the place and he wants to win souls for himself that's why he causes other children not to listen when they tell you don't do this you do it and then that's what we say that when what we read that um sometimes if you don't do the things that work God says you should do. If you don't do them, then you're a child of what? Child of the devil, right? If you don't do the right thing, then you are not a child of God. Um, there was somebody's hand that has been up for a while. Is it a Nike? I think it's a Nike. A Nike, yes, you can go. And then after Nike, we'll go to Darren before Ifwa. Um, so I remember. I remember when um when God when God tried to get to get um uh, Paul to become like like it's kind of it's kind of related to a few a few story and um mm -hmm. and like even if even if every one of us sin God still loves us no matter how bad we do it except mm -hmm. there's still a punishment but He still loves us. No matter what, even even our parents love us. No matter what we do. So, and the other thing is that if you do something to your friend, it also affects God because you when you you have love for God and you don't have love for others, then you're a liar. But if you have love for God and others, then you, then you are telling the truth about what you just said. So if you affect a person like by hitting them, it also affects God because your God is the one who um who start who started them before who made made your friend before before um before wait no he yeah. who, okay it's kind of like that. That, so, that's okay. God bless you. God, God, sorry. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Awesome. Awesome contribution. Fantastic one, Anika. I'm so proud of you. Yes, we'll go to um, Darren. Then we, we go to Caleb. I wanted to say that God also requires us to love our parents too. That is why it says in Ephesians 6, 
one that we should love them. It says in Ephesians 6, 1 that we should love our parents too because this is the first commandment with a promise. And, that, and he also said that if we love our parents, we also live long we also live very, very long lives. So if you want to live very, very long lives, there is only one way to do that, by loving our parents. By loving our parents, as we love like Jesus. Remember, Jesus went to the wedding, right? Went to a wedding with the mother, right? And the mother was so proud of her, of Jesus. And the mother was so proud of him that he, he went to brag, right? I'm just using that. It wasn't the Bible like that, that Mary went to brag. Now, I'm just saying that Mary went to the uh, people and said, if your guys are running out of wine, my son can, can, can do something and, and give us more wine. Uh, don't you think that statement alone, Mary was telling the people at the party that my son, he, she basically, she's so proud of what? Of her son, right? And why? Because Jesus loved the mother and jo uh, Joseph and, and Mary so much. We need to love not just our neighbors and brothers and sisters, but we should also what? Give our parents respect, love them for who they are. There are kids of today that they are not proud of their mom or they are not proud of their dad because, oh, my mom do this. And because they are comparing their parent to another parent. We are different in our own ways. We are different, right? And because of that, you need to appreciate your mom. You need to appreciate your dad. You need to be proud of their parent. They are doing everything they can for you. All you can do is love them and pray for them. Whatever you see in that parent of your friend, that you want that, I don't want my family. I want to go be with them. No, appreciate your family. Love them. Be proud of them and pray for them to be there for you at all times. Great contribution. But Darren, you just spoke and your hand is already up again. We will, <laughs> we will go to Caleb. I will go to Caleb and come to Ifwa, then Declan before Darren. Oh, okay. I have the Benedict and Benedict, the boys family too. Okay, let's do Caleb first. Okay. Wow. And precious ones, we are wrapping up now. Just letting you know we're wrapping up. So once you get a turn, I'm not coming back to you again, okay? We need to, to wrap up. Okay, so yes, Caleb, you can go. Well, I want to say that, um, wait. You forgot? Your brother can go and then you can come back in. Okay. Okay. Yes, Joel. Um, what I want to say is that, um, Jesus showed his love by dying his um, by dying on the cross and this showed us the three types of love his sacrificial love by um, sacrificing his life for us and hum um, humble love although he was at a high position in heaven he thought of us and realized that we need him and hmm. so he came from heaven above and to and down here and also um and also a uh, wise love. He knew we needed him. So he used his mind, which was very wise of him. So that's all I want to say. God bless you. God bless you. That is deep. That is awesome. God bless you. Yes, Caleb. Well, it's kind of like Joel's. Um, his sacrificial love was to save the whole world. And it kind of reminds me of this verse named Philip said that says, that is Philippians 2 9. Therefore, God exalted him in the highest place and gave him the name above, above all names. So that, and, and put, and that means like, um, that means like, whenever we say the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. And, and Christ is Lord. Great job, great job, great job, Caleb. Great job, great job. So we'll go to the Yaboas family. Yaboas family. Go first this time. So in Jeremiah 32, verse 3, it says, Call to me and I'll answer you and tell you great 
and unsatchable things you do not know. That means he loves you. That means he loves you. Remember, let me tell you one thing. Um, I always tell my children that I, um, when they were, once you get to five years old, then I'll start teaching them about when you, when you need to call 911. When you call 911, the things you need to say in case somebody's in trouble, when you find yourself in a, a place, you need to know your house address and all that, right? And then I told them all that when I was teaching them, I also told them, look, but when it comes to the one 911 in the Bible is Jeremiah 33 verse 3. That is our 911 in the Bible. And that is what Joel uh, Jaden just read. Call on to me and I will do what? I will answer you. Right? Kids of today will rather call 911 and say, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to and bang the phone. But how many times do we call our 911 in the Bible? Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Go read it if you don't know. The Bible is saying that call unto me, whatever you are going through, whatever that is bothering you. If you want to have long hair, if you want to be uh, blue, if you want to be pink, whatever that is bothering you. It's good to tell mommy and daddy and tell your friend if you want to. But the person that wants us to always call on him is, is God. Jeremiah 33 verse 3, call on me and I will answer you. If the Bible is telling you that, why don't you want to do it? Beloved, I go to God with, precious one, I go to God with anything, anything, because the Bible says that what, that is his promise, call on me and I will answer you. Let's call. If you go to God and ask God, God, you said I should call on you, so I want um, uh, a Tesla. I want the Tesla, the, the car that the doors fly up in the hair. Will God give it to you? No. Why will God not give it to you? Because it's not appropriate at that time. You don't have a driver's license. You can't even buy a breakfast for yourself and you're asking for a Tesla. Really? Can you even buy the gas in it? No. So God will answer you, but at that point, it is not what? It is not appropriate. Will God answer you later? Yes. Yeah. So precious ones like us, what are some of the things we can ask? We can ask for what? Wisdom, right? Wisdom. If you, are, you have wisdom, you'll be smart in school. You need your job, your full-time job is school, education, right? So you need wisdom to be able to learn and be smart, right? And be able to do better in school. That is what you need, not Tesla, because you can't even drive. God bless you, Jaden. Fantastic answer, uh, contribution. Yes, we go to Benedict. I just want to add to Anika what how she said, like the Holy Spirit also acts like a human. Like we don't read the Bible and just forget, and you keep saying too much and don't convict. The Holy Spirit doesn't like when you don't feel guilty or sad for like, I'm, oh man, I did this. I should probably go to up to God and confess. That's when the Holy Spirit gets sad, and eventually the Holy Spirit will leave you. And David even said that, please, it said in the Bible when we were praying, please do not let your spirit leave me. After he did, he made, well, that goes into something else. But still. Okay. Okay. God bless you. God bless you, Benedict. Apostle Benedict. God bless you. God bless you. We'll go to um, um, Anaika. Then we go to A4, then we come to the Foley family, and then we are we are wrapping up now. Oh, Jaden, you wanted some you wanted to say something? Yes. Okay, say it because I'm not coming back to, to you again. And then, Once we pass, that's it. We are wrapping up. In Elijah 41, verse 31, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. That's how God loves you. That's how God loves you. Those that hope in the Lord, those that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. Fantastic. Yes, Anaika. Anaika, if you're not ready, we can go to A4 and get back to you. Oh, I don't have anything, so. You don't have anything. Okay. But what have you learned today? Because we are wrapping up. Oh, well, I learned about the sacrificial love of God because, um, God he loves us no matter how bad we've been because God is not always with us in the good times, but he's always with us in the bad times too. 
God bless you. God bless you. Fantastic. Love you so much. Yes, we go to Ifwa. Um, I would like to finish my school. Yes, please. Um, what I was saying, but then my internet was going down. Um, about Paul, he was one of the people who hated um, Jesus's followers, like people who would preach to the sinners and tell them um, what God's word is. Um, he was one of that. He was one of those people. He was actually like the leader kind of. And then God, and God helped him. God made him blind. God made um, Paul blind and changed his name to Saul, and Saul changed throughout. Um, Saul changed throughout his life from there, like being a preacher and going to other places to preach to people who um, are believers of God. And I, God bless you. And I like to say that um, from in the beginning, like um, from Adam and Eve, when they disobeyed God and ate the apple or the fruit, um, God still loved them no matter what. That's why when he banished them from the garden, he was watching over them and um, gave them two sons and helped them with their crops and stuff. God bless you, Ifwa, God bless you. We'll move to the Ufori family and we'll bring our lesson to an end. So for uh, Deron and then Declan. Okay. Or Declan First. or Deron. Yeah, Deron and then Declan. Okay, I learned that God's love for us is highly sacrificial because Christ just came to it all just so that you can come and die to forgive our sins. As it says in Romans 5, 8, but God demonstrates his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Probably. Whilst we were still sinners, Christ died for us all. God bless you, Darren. Fantastic one. Yes, Declan. Um, I just wanted to say that in, um, in the story in my upon all that some blood and Tobias plan um, to do to Nehemiah and the wall of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. um, Nehemiah still continued to obey God's command. And also, I learned that hate is like murder, is like murder, and because both hate and murder come from sin, unloving, and evil desires. God bless you, Declan. God bless you, my second youngest. God richly bless you, Declan. God bless you. Fantastic contribution. So, precious ones, we must choose to sacrifice instead of selfishness. If we want to love like Jesus, we need to choose to sacrifice instead of what? Instead of being selfish, selfishness. We, know we don't have to be so self-centered. Everything we do have to be not be only upon us or just self, but it should be about us, your neighbors, your friends, your families, right? It should be up, up, about all of us. Jesus, who never sinned? deserved endless blessings but instead he chose to sacrifice his own life or life why because of his love for us he never sinned he didn't deserve to end his life like that but what he decided to what because of the love he has for us he chose to sacrifice his own life because of the love he has for us. Jesus was more concerned about obeying God by loving others instead of pleasing himself. And I say this again, Jesus was more concerned about obeying God by loving others, neighbors, friends, precious ones like us, instead of pleasing his own self. And when we follow his humble example, we show true love to the people around us. We precious ones, when we choose to humble ourselves, there's a song, if you humble yourself before the Lord, he will lift, he will lift you up. Oh, if you humble, humble yourself, yourself before, before the Lord, Lord he he will lift you up. He will lift you up. He will lift you up. Hallelujah. Humble yourself.
children's ministry if you humble yourself before the lord he will lift you up it is not about me it is not about you it is all about what it is all about christ it is all about jesus it is all about god everything that we do let us give all the glory to the lord if we humble ourselves before the lord we show true love to people around us. That is why precious when you go to school and you listen and you just, oh, this girl is so precious. Oh, this precious girl. Oh, she listens. She's true. She's he's, she's what they, they have. They said, yeah, the, the hawk pride or what. There's a name in your schools that when you're obedient and respectful and you obey the rules, there's a name in your school or somewhere that this, this it stands, it makes you stand out, right? As precious ones, if you say you love the Lord and you don't humble yourself and you go to school and you're all over the place, you run in your mouth, you are here, your teacher tells you to do this, you do that, you do that. I, do you think you are showing that humbleness that the Bible is talking about? No, because it's saying that if you humble yourself, you are showing the what the true love of God. Precious ones, may the Lord bless us all. May the Lord bless us all. May the Lord keep us all what? Safe till we meet again. I'm not going to leave. I have a big announcement here that I need to make. So I'm going to show my screen here and I'm just going to talk about it real quick. And then we will go. And it is about, where is it? It is about um, Pentecostal puppet, the Pentecostal puppet that we've been talking about. Yay! It is right here. It is right here. So we are going to talk about it. Precious ones, the National Children's Ministry theme for the year 2021 is a glorious church revived to raise godly children. A glorious church revived to raise godly children. Ephesians 5, 27, 3, and then 21, and then Psalm, and Psalm 85, verse 6. There's going to be a first ever national level um, case, Pentecostal pulpit for kids, COP USA. And then the national level competition will be held on August the 1st during Children's Week. Precious ones. The theme or the sermon, your sermon you need, this is going to start from local, from your assemble, assembly to the national level. So call your teachers, call your district leaders, call your national, uh, regional leaders and find out about this Pentecostal pulpit for Pentecostal pulpit for kids. It is a new competition that we are coming up with this year. And pretty much the goal is to teach kids how to stand behind the pulpit and preach the word of God. This is not the one that you just print something on a paper and come and stand there and read everything. You are going to prepare your own sermon. And the sermon you need to prepare should what? Go around the theme for the year. A glorious church revived to possess the nation. That theme is not for the children's ministry theme. That is the theme that is written in blue. The whole big church theme, a glorious church revived to possess the nation. Ephesians 5, 27, Ephesians 3, 21, and, if, uh, and John 85, verse 6. Precious one, you can do it. The areas that we are going to focus on, pastors and presbyters are going to be the ones sitting, watching, and be what? Be giving the maps. We only need one person. Every local will come up with one person. District will come up with one person. And then on regional level, every region will bring one person. And then we'll go to the finals of finals in August the 1st. Precious ones, you can do this. We are so proud of you. We are going to focus on your dressing, 
how you dress to come and stand on the pulpit to preach. Don't bring a, a tank top or bring a sweatshirt on and you say you are going to preach. No, you need to dress nicely. And then your posture, your posture, how you share the word of God and how you move around with the word, we'll be looking at that. And then the presentation of your sermon, do you just start your sermon by just reading or you're going to introduce it with a little bit story and then you kind of ease yourself into it. Precious ones, this is the information we have for you. We know you will be part of this. We know you are going to take part of this. Precious one, I love um, um, case time with Jesus, but this thing will also be shown here. It's a national program. It's part of case time with Jesus. Pentecostal pulpit for kids. Don't take yourself out of it. Be part of it. Have fun whilst we learn. May the Lord bless all of us. May the Lord keep us and strengthen us and keep us safe till we meet again next week. Until then, is we love you all and bye. Bye, bye. everyone. We love you. Bye. bye.